These next two presenters really embody what I love in my life, which is writing and dance. And they're bringing both of them together. And this is Sunkissed Dance Studio featuring Jerome Washington and Jarrell Rochelle. How y'all doing? It is an honor to be here. And uh, give it up for yourselves. This is history we're creating right now, and I, I want to capture it. So everyone say cheese. OK. This is amazing. Because these are all the ideas and I, I, you know, idealists and thinkers here, right? Right? And so we're here to, um, to all be inspired, and I've been, I've been inspired by all the speakers that, that came before. And uh, just to be here has just been a huge blessing, and this guy right here is just incredible. And so we want to talk about just, just belief and how you can do whatever you put your mind to. And I know people say that, but like literally, like, um, it's like thoughts are, are tangible, right? Like they, they become like they become manifested into like actually happening. And it's like whatever you think about, over and over and over again, eventually happens. I mean, how do you think the iPhone got here, or the iPod, or, or anything like that, or, or, or the car? And, and anything starts with an idea, and so um, ideas are powerful. So hold on to those ideas, and don't let anyone rip those ideas from you, because those ideas could literally impact the world. You know, think about the Wright brothers. You know, people are like, what? A big piece of metal flying across the ocean? Literally? Really? It's crazy. It's impossible. impossible. What, what is impossible? Right? Impossible can happen. Impossible it can happen, right? And so we're going to be um, doing, this, doing this deal. And he, Gerald has a, sh has a story he wants to share with you. Remember, let him share that with you. And so I'm a poet. And so I use words to be able to, to reach people and to give people a voice because, um, you know, growing up as a kid, my father was like, Jerome, you need to be a lawyer, right? They got benefits. And poems will leave you homeless. <laughs> and it's funny because I'm homeless right now. It's funny. <laughs> it's for like a week. No, no, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it's because I, I just, I got fed up and you, you got to be so disgusted with like living this life that you're living, you created this pretty great, comfortable life for yourself. You have this, you have this house, you have this nice car, you have this nice income, but you're, you're still feeling like there's something missing. And, and that's, that's, that sucks. And I know, and I don't want to be 70, 80 years old and realize, you know, what, wishing what I could have done or who I could have been instead of just pursuing my dream, instead of being somebody that they told me I should be like, when we're all individuals and we're supposed to figure out that deal for yourself, you know what I mean? No one else can tell you that. And so um, I want to introduce Jarrell right here real quick, and he's going to share this story with you. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. We'll be here all night. I'm, get, I'm kidding. I'm not, I'm not going to bail out. Um, so I'm going to share a story with you guys, and it kind of connects with uh, the reason why we're doing this piece today. So I'm a dancer, and dancers go to conventions, and you know, dance and ah, da, 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 all day. So um, there was this girl who was a part of my home studio and she just got through performing. Most amazing performance I had ever seen in my life, like just connected and present and 100% there. And so she got off stage and I asked her, I said, hey girl, what are you gonna do with that talent that you have? And she was like, well, you know, I'm gonna be like a doctor or something. <laughs> I almost slapped her. I was like, what do you mean you're gonna be a doctor? And then her friend butts in and she says, well, she wants to change lives and she wants to make a difference. And so in that moment, I was like, who told her that she couldn't change lives as a dancer or make a difference? And why did she believe it, more importantly? So the boxes that we're presenting today are so many, so many ways of people trying to put you in a box because they're stuck in one themselves. And so what we're encouraging you to do is not to be trapped in a box just because someone says you can't do it or it's impossible or uh, you don't have the means. We want you to think outside the box, step out of it, and then kick it over. <laughs> yeah? Make sense? Thank you, this is where you clap. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you. But um, yeah, so we're just gonna perform it for you and we hope you enjoy it.
so. At three, he used his box to step on, to reach things out of reach, like cookie jars and light switches. And at six, he transformed this box into a spaceship. He aimed at the stars, figured it was easier to talk to God if he was closer to Mars at 10. The box became his clubhouse for him and his invisible friends hanging out, <laughs> daydreaming about growing into older kids who actually made a difference for a living by helping and serving others for a living. Following their dreams, following their dreams, following their dreams, following their dreams like streams to rivers, giving like there was no such word as empty because the toy boxes were full and their love for the world was more powerful than any nuclear bomb you could muster out of your darkest of nightmares. And the only fear they feared was the fear, the only fear they feared was the fear of not having enough time to save the universe before the adults imprisoned their minds captivating their creativity with words of doubt like, no, you can't, unreachable, impossible, impossible. So at 14, at 14, he stretched the box out on the pavement. <laughs> the boom box was the soundtrack as he was breaking down in the basement, breaking sweats, top of the class, like dancing was his major. It all started with cardboard boxes that was taped up. He'd be beatboxing and pop locking. He'd be beatboxing and pop locking. He'd be beatboxing and pop locking. He'd be he be he be he be he be he be he be beatboxing and pop locking on street corners while his pops be boxing his mama. More drama than Bobby and Whitney's breakup. So we taped up the box together again. This time, this time to put things in. Then he moved into his parents' crib, into his dorm room for his freshman year. Then he placed the box on the shelf. Y'all, he watched it. He watched it till it sucked the life right out of him. TV, programming our thoughts to be drawn into the box like check marks on life's test. He struggled all semester long to keep his boxes full, but they stayed empty. Tuition box empty, homework box, empty, ice box, empty, pizza box, empty, cigar box, empty, his soul, gone. And it was a miracle that he graduated from college. For the opportunity of a lifetime, eventually his career became his box. Another American dream deferred slaving over the computer box, punching words till his fingers lock. The haters told him, you will not make it out this corporate box alive, but a little boy's voice inside said, impossible. Impossible is a lie that people often tell because they don't trust God. You have heart like a box of cards, besides the stars are really not that high. And you're sitting on the shoulders of God. These boxes try to regulate your destiny. And it's like your haters keep testing me, but God keep blessing me with the right ingredients like a Paula Deen recipe. <laughs> Man, it's so good. So don't try to jack me. You're living outside the boxes. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine, 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 imagine a world Imagine what you would attempt if failure was never an option. Thank you. Thank you.